What up fam, it's your girl Des coming to you with the US movie review. All right, so let me just say this shit here. This fucking movie was amazing, okay? Amazing, bitch. I don't give a fuck if you didn't like it. I... Levels. Levels. So anybody who tell me they don't like it, I'm thinking, okay, that's fine. Because it's levels to this shit. If you don't understand it, by all means. Now, hopefully you're watching this now and you ain't trying to expand your knowledge on the movie to try to figure out what the fuck is going on. All right. Now, I looked up buku different theories and i also watched jordan peele lapitas and um i forgot the other actors real life names but i watched their interview that they had i'm to agree with some of the theories and also there's some theories i'm about to debunk in this bitch because it don't make any motherfucking sense okay and i'll get to that no don't you fucking fret we'll get there now spoiler alert Letting you know right now, like, I couldn't think of any other way to give a movie review without, of course, spoiling that bitch. But, you know, if you still here by now, I'm assuming that you don't give a fuck about the spoiler because you're either A, not gonna watch the movie because it's scary as shit, or B, you don't give a fuck because even though you know the ending, you can still enjoy the movie like myself. Okay, now, for me... The only plot twist I believe happened was really Adelaide being the tethered and Red Adelaide being the original copy that we saw at the beginning of the film. Now, for me, that is the only fucking plot twist. Jason was not fucking switched. Now, that's just my opinion. I'll talk about why I don't believe so in a little bit. So, US stands for US, and I'm going to just go ahead and say it's a United States movie about privilege and classism. All right, so excuse me, y'all will be referring to my notes. All right. Now, the movie opens up with a few sentences and basically it's talking about we have abandoned tunnels and roads underground beneath us. Now, the first scene starts off with a little girl watching TV and uh, she's watching different commercials and one in particular is Hands Across America. Now, Hands Across America was an actual campaign that did happen back in the day. This is a clue that this is what Red A is going to be doing 30 years from now. And what also what the difference is, is the Hands Across America that really happened back in the 80s, that didn't succeed, but Red A, she does. But we'll get to that. We'll get to that. After that, the next scene, we go to the carnival. And you see the little girl that we were introduced to with her mom and her dad. Winning all these games for her. And honestly, while I'm watching the movie, I'm thinking, okay, so these, these clips have to mean something. So everything that she, who is technically Red A, everything that she was seeing, who we know of, Adelaide, was looking around as well, but she was looking at distorted versions of it. And when she looked over and saw a roller coaster, Adelaide saw motherfuckers in a line that was just shaking and shit. Like they were zombie-like or some crackheads. When the dad is winning games for her, he wins her a prize that she picks out. It was number 1111, but it was the Thriller t-shirt that we all know about. And then some people also say that this was also an Easter egg because how the Thriller movie ended, turn around, look, or whatever, and the beady eyes. That's kind of like what old girl did to her when she switched them out. Let, I'll get back to that. So then her mom asked her dad while he is playing whack-a-mole if he could watch his daughter while she goes to the bathroom. And he's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm just thinking, really, bitch? You really gonna walk away when he obviously doesn't have his undivided attention on your daughter? And I bet you you're gonna be mad at him for not paying attention. Why would you walk away? Come on now, mama. You smarter than that. You know damn well he ain't gonna be looking out for her. And he wasn't. Because as soon as she walked away, she walks away as well, the little girl. So while she's walking... She makes eye contact with this evil ass looking homeless man who has Jeremiah 1111 written on the sign. While I was in the movies, I went ahead and looked it up. And Jeremiah 1111 says, I will bring evil that they cannot escape. They can cry, but I will ignore them. That's basically what the fuck it says. Then we look up and we see this house of mirrors type of place. It says, find yourself with an arrow. 
So she goes in the place and it looks like it's an ordinary haunted house. Things popping up at her. So she's just walking around and then she's trying to look for an exit. And then she sees that she's in like a mirror maze. So she starts whistling. Then when she stops, she hears somebody else whistling. Of course, we get creeped out. We look and then we see her double facing the opposite direction. Cut scene. Then you see a rabbit. And then it pans out and then you see a whole bunch of rabbits locked away. And it looks like locked away for testing or for experiments. Now, 30 years goes by. It shows the little girl, Adelaide, who is, of course, Lapita, with her husband and her kids riding in the car to their beach house. They are the middle class. Why? Because they have enough money to have their own beach home. They have enough to not be poor, but not too much to be considered the upper class or wealthy. So like they have money, but they ain't got all that, all right? And of course, this is the scene where we see that she's snapping off beat, which honestly, we should have known there. And low key, we did, cause I saw a lot of theories that came out, bitch, when the trailer dropped and a motherfucker already pieced that up. But that's okay, whatever. Whatever, y'all. So they make it to the beach house and they at the table eating burgers and Adelaide is eating strawberries and it's just also this is another hint to us that adelaide is fucking weird because that bitch was tearing that strawberry the fuck up nigga and this could have been a hint that she doesn't eat meat because red adelaide tells us that they eat raw rabbit down an underground in a tethered world so we could assume that adelaide was like fuck all that meat shit and she just stuck with it fruit so it's here where they also try to hint that jason's vocabulary has changed and they're questioning why now on the way to the beach and y'all of course i'm giving y'all i ain't gonna give y'all a full review because motherfuckers who here y'all know what the fuck y'all here for so they go to the beach she sees the guy that she saw years ago the homeless man right but the motherfucker is dead stretched out going like in the ambulance so, all right, weird. Also, Zora hint that we are being poisoned by the government, but like all conspiracy theories, she's ignored and they don't even have a conversation about it. Like they don't even really even much acknowledge what she says. Now, they're at the beach. Adelaide is with the white lady. I'm sorry, I don't, I don't remember the, the white family's name. I don't, uh. anyway. Adelaide is disconnected with her. Zora is disconnected with other people because she's on a fucking beach and she is glued to her fucking phone. And Jason is disconnected because they look at him weird because instead of building fucking sandcastles, this motherfucker is building tunnels, right? And this is why people say that he's tethered and all that type of shit. But no, I beg to differ. I feel like the reason why all three of them are disconnected is because they are all fucking tethered. And naturally, it's hard for them to connect with people or their surroundings because technically they ain't much supposed to motherfucking be there. You know what I'm saying? And I've only watched the movie once. I would definitely want to go back and watch it a second time. But I'm curious if she was texting people because it looked like she was just listening to music. So, and I only say that to say, even though that she wasn't connecting with somebody there, she hasn't been connected with anybody else on a social level. Because she's weird and she's a fucking tethered. Then... Jason walks to a porta potty after talking to Zora, and I would have cussed her ass out if I was motherfucking Adelaide. Like, bitch, don't you let your little brother walk to no damn porta potty by his goddamn self. I wouldn't say bitch, not to my daughter, of course. But you know what the fuck I'm talking about. You know better than that. You smarter than that, goddamn it. Now, Jason sees the homeless dude that we just that we saw dead in the ambulance. We then see him stressed out with blood coming from his hands. Now we know, at the time we didn't know, but now we know that he was actually the tethered version of the homeless guy. And he was one of the first ones to start off. So he had his hands stretched out waiting for everybody else to come and join him after killing their original copy. So then we flash back to Adelaide and the rich white friend. It seems like she's disconnected, but they make us feel like the reason why she's not connecting with her is because she was traumatized when she, the last time she was on the beach then it flashed back to where Adelaide is at the therapist's office and listening to her parents talk to the therapist about things that they should do to help her but what they don't motherfucking know is that the reason why she's a motherfucking mute is because she don't know how to motherfucking speak English and she switched out their goddamn daughter 
but we get that flashback in the movie so still trying to hint that adelaide is a little girl that we're talking about they hinted how adelaide used to be a beautiful dancer I believe the woman asked her why she doesn't dance anymore now the reason why adelaide used that fuck ass excuse that she lost interest for the art is because bitch ain't got no rhythm so that's why she gave up dancing because she can't dance. Red A is the one who can dance. This could also be the reason why Ombre is faster than Zora because Ombre is coordinated like her mammy. So she can run whereas Zora can't run just like her mama can't motherfucking dance. The therapist basically tells her parents to try to have her express herself in art and dance and drawing. Throughout the movie, there are bits and pieces that are revealed from what happened 30 years before. But I ain't gonna lie, y'all. I can't fucking remember exactly where. But y'all go watch and let me know. Cool. So they're making plans and they're saying that they're getting ready to leave and get together later. So Adelaide looks up for Zora and Jason and doesn't see him and then flips the fuck out and she's frantically looking over for him and at first we're thinking oh the reason why she's doing all this because she's been traumatized from her past experience and she doesn't want that to happen to her son but no 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 that is not why the reason why she was all frantic and everything yes she was worried for her son but she was also worried that his tethered um pluto is going to switch them out like she did with red adelaide that is why they get home talk a little bit kids go to bed she goes to jason's room and then she basically talks to him about you know i'll always be here for you you can always count on me i got you you know being a good mom while she's walking out of the room she sees the drawing of the homeless guy that Jason saw earlier with the blood coming from his hand. And so that already, that freaks her out. And so she's starting to see and notice that something the fuck is up. And there's too many coincidences that are going on at this time. And she goes and she talks to her husband, telling him a watered down version of the story of what happened. And also to keep the audience from knowing who the fuck she really is but she does tell him about the mirror girl and basically says how she's been feeling her watching her all her life red adelaide is closing in on her and she doesn't feel safe she feels her privilege slipping out of her hands and wanting to comfort her but the bitch knows she's been watching her all her life and she knows she's coming for her because she knows that she was foul as shit for what she did so she knows that Red Adelaide will want revenge for stealing her privileged life. Now, Gabe, Gabe is our white guy of the movie. He's very gullible, very naive. It's hard for him to grasp weird, abnormal shit or concepts. Like he's very, it has to be logical. It has to make sense. So that's the character that Gabe is, right? So in the middle of their conversation, the lights cut off. And we're like, okay. And then... They're like, oh, hey, there's a family outside. And we like, well, damn, nigga, he just, we in the movie, like, well, damn, he just threw us in this goddamn motherfucker. All right, y'all, the horror has fucking begun. Didn't warm us up, bitch, light went out, and that was it. Now, I'm not gonna lie, but first time I'm watching this movie, I'm just, I was thinking, this is unrealistic. Ain't no black person is gonna go outside. Like, nigga, the fuck, please. But then again, I thought about it. And I thought about black masculinity, and I'm like, Okay, y'all can definitely see a nigga going outside to try to protect his family. I can definitely see that. Now, even though Gabe pissed me off throughout the movie because he was doing dumb shit, and I was just like, come on, man. Unfortunately, we needed somebody like him because, I mean, at the end of the day, dumb shit gets done all the time in real life. But, ciao! Long story short, Gabe is injured within the first minute to two minutes of even fucking encountering the goddamn family with his own weapon that he brings the bat okay and that happens when he's trying to shut the door on abraham which is his tethered version of himself because i mean red adelaide already knows that there's a fucking secret key bitch i mean come on we should have known this now adelaide is shocked and can't take her eyes off of the red adelaide and should have known something was up at this point because she implies with Red A when Red A tells her to handcuff herself to the table. And now we know that the reason why she had that bitch handcuff herself to that goddamn table. Because remember, Adelaide cuffed Red Adelaide to the bed when she had choked her ass out and then dragged her down to the damn tethered land. 
Yes. And when she switched them, yes. So that is why she had her handcuffed herself. And she was handcuffed throughout the whole movie. So then Red Adelaide tells a story about the different lives compared to those up above and those down below who are tethered. Those who are above ground take their lives for granted. While they have nice things, eat great food, those below had to eat rabbit. They always got the shit end of the stick. 100% of the time. But they are the exact opposites of those who are above the ground. She explains why A was living her life. I'm just gonna hit call Adelaide A, Red Adelaide, Red A. So if I say A, we smart enough to understand what the fuck I'm talking about, right? All right, cool. So she explains that while A was living her life above ground, she had to sadly mimic her shit below ground. Ombre, who is Ted the Zora, was born smiling. And Pluto, who is the tethered version of Jason, he was born on fire. Also, if y'all didn't catch the way that Ombre and Pluto were born into the world, it's how they died leaving out that motherfucker. Now, I saw a lot of theories that were saying that the reason why Red A was talking like that was because A had choked the living shit out of her and crushed her vocal cords. But she was basically mimicking those who have a spasmonic disorder. It's something that is caused by trauma and causes the vocal cords to like have like a spasm. In the script, all it said was she didn't use her voice for a long time. Not because she got choked the fuck out. She ain't used her voice for a long time. So I'm here to tell y'all that is why she sounds like that. And also, not only was she not talking for so long, but she has a vocabulary of a five-year-old child. Jordan Peele said in the interview, he trusts his audience to be intelligent and to do the investigative work. And it's like, I got you, my nigga. Red A's family doesn't kill A's family so quick because it's not just about murdering their originals. This is all because of Adelaide. So you best fucking believe Red Adelaide was gonna get her revenge by fucking with them and killing them off as slow as possible. So Gay asked them, you know, who are you? What do you want? And her response was, well, we're Americans. And right there, that's when I knew in the movie, I'm like, US, us, United States, got it. So now we know the double meaning of the title, but their whole revolution is 100% American. That's what the fuck we do. If there's some shit that we not feeling, we have an uproar. So Red A has her family, fuck with them one by one while she sits with Adelaide while she's handcuffed to the table. And then Gabe crippled ass is being manhandled by Abraham on his own goddamn boat. Like, and I think I just know that that's funny. You get a boat, you get manhandled on that. You get the bat, he hits your ass with that. Like, Gabe is just, he's hes literally his own worst fucking enemy. Like, I'm seeing that. Ombre gave Zora a slow ass, a whole ass motherfucking me head start and still caught up to her ass. I mean, like that. With Jason, he was still in the house. They just went to go play in the closet. So throughout the movie, we thought Adelaide was fighting for her family. But really, after finding out the ending that she's actually the tethered Adelaide, we then realized that she hasn't been fighting for her family. She's been fighting for herself. She's been selfish as all fuck and fighting for her privileged life that she worked so hard for AKA, do you like, bitch, do you know how hard it was to fucking go up there, choke that bitch out and drag her down here so I can handcuff her to a bed so I can live her life and learn her language? Like, come on now, this shit was hard. I had to work for this. I had to pull myself up my own bootstraps. Shit like that. Like, that's, that's where the movie's coming from to make you think it's classism. And after Adelaide fought and got to a certain level, certain class, the working class or the middle class, she didn't give a fuck about those that she left behind. Like a lot of motherfuckers. Long story short, everybody breaks free from their tethered and they head to their rich friend's house. The Tylers or some shit like that. So we flash over to the Tylers and we basically see that they live in this lavish house, tech savvy all that shit still drinking like a motherfucker you know the elites and then they're killed the fuck off like that and people say is that when she was crawling for her life and she asked their version of alexa to call the police they started it started playing 
fuck the police by NWA instead. And it's like, the police wasn't gonna be able to help you anyway, so fuck them. So they make it to the, we gonna call them the Tylers, y'all. Hopefully that's who the fuck they are. They're going there for refuge. They're trying to seek some help. Not really knowing or realizing that everybody's clone is going to be after their asses, all right? So then they get Adelaide, and now the kids are left to find Adelaide in the house and get her so they can get the fuck out. Now, honestly, I can't remember where the fuck Gabe was at this time. His crippled ass was probably, I don't know, somewhere in the background. Like, y'all, he, he literally like was no help after the first minute and a half of the family being there like honest to god he's just been crippled he can't do shit so something that i noticed with zora and this whole scene with her and jason walking through the house killing the tethered and trying to find adelaide and while i was watching the movie i was just like well damn she showed to get the hang of things pretty fast i mean obviously like we're ever in that Child, my washing machine is louder than a bitch. Let me. Lord. Shit. Now knowing who their mama is, it's like, okay, is that also another sign that she's half tethered? She was able to start killing so easily and quick. So they kill the tethered. And they're like, okay, well, at least now we got a car. Because at first, Gabe, gullible, stoop ass, was like, Oh, we need to stay here. Like, we're safe here. We have food. Why are we leaving? And Adelaide knows that Red A is coming for that ass, bitch. It's like, she knows this. So she's like, why would we stay here? Our clone, they know what we would do, which is true. They know where the fuck they would go. They go outside and guess who forgets the keys again. So Adelaide goes back in there and the second twin, she's trying to bite her, right? And they're just fighting and they tussling and around. So Jason goes back in the house to see what's taking his mom so long and trying to see where the fuck the key is. And Jason sees his mom kill the twin and then lets out this tethered growl. So this was Jason's first kind of experience with his mom that's like, Something ain't fucking right. So there's a lot of different Easter eggs throughout the movie and stuff that's gonna come back later. Early in the movie, they were telling Zora, as long as you put your mind on something, anything is possible. Bitch, flash forward, this motherfucker is in the goddamn me car with her tethered right ahead, looking at Adelaide and was like, go ahead, get in the car, I'm driving. Adelaide was like, look, don't fuck with me right now. Get your ass to the back. And Zora was like, no get in the back i got it and i was in the movies my nerves is bad i was like we don't have time for this let that adult motherfucking drive because she didn't know what the fuck she was doing couldn't run over the bitch oh god i was just like zora is about to get everybody killed so finally she hits her hard enough that this bitch is mangled up in a tree so they head back to their house and in the middle of the street guess who fucking car is on fire theirs and then they're like what adelaide gets out the car when she sees pluto and because she, she's ready to fucking beat some ass for her family so we think that it's for her ass now jason remembers when they all picked them off one-on-one -on -one. jason and pluto just went to the closet and he noticed that pluto was mirroring and copying what he was doing so he went ahead and used that to his advantage and he went outside and started walking backwards now we could think that the reason why he was able to do that he has a better connection with him so he basically makes do commit suicide but you'll notice that Adelaide feels for Pluto and Ombre when they die. And it's mostly because she was once them. She knew that they were more than just monsters and that they too could conform and normalize themselves like she did 30 years ago. So we think everything is good. And then the camera pans and we see Red A coming up and snatches up Jason and go. So Zora and Gabe, they just went hiding in the ambulance so Adelaide can go find Jason. Adelaide knew exactly where the fuck to go. And now looking back at it, we should have known that this time 
that she was the bad guy, but she knew to go straight to the House of Mirrors, which find yourself, which is symbolic in itself. Meets up with Red A. There's another information drop on her ass. At first, we think that Adelaide is down there to get and save her son, but we really know that she's down there to kill Red A so she can maintain her privileged spot. That's it. And so what's really lit, like the their fighting scene, bitch, when he took the riff from I Got Five on it, bitch, it was amazing. One of the best fighting scenes I've ever seen, bitch. A fighting dance scene in a horror movie. I, you know what I want from Jordan Peele? I want an action movie. Because, bitch, his direction is so, man, y'all, the fighting scene was fucking fire. Bitch, it was better than anything that goddamn me Black Panther did. I'm telling y'all, I should have fucking been on YouTube when Black Panther came out. Because Black Panther was fucking trash. But we'll, oh, <laughs> I might want to even get on that shit. But, yes. So, she basically kills her. And then she lets out this horrid growl and then flashes back with the scenes and then we see that Adelaide actually choked the living hell out of Red Adelaide when they were kids. When she goes looking for Jason, she opens uh, like a locker or whatever and he's kind of looking at her like, you know, like, bitch, I don't even know who the fuck you are, right? And there's some people who are like, oh, Jason is tethered. Jason is tethered too. Question, why would he look at her like that? Like, I don't know who you are. And curiosity and then wouldn't Adelaide know that her son was switched since she was a tethered and would she know to keep an eye out for that and then when would he be able to get switched if that happens on the beach and they haven't been to the beach in years and that's why Adelaide was talking to Gabe about not being sure if she wants to go or not so it just didn't make any sense for Jason to know what the fuck is going on because the nigga looked completely confused but what can you do Adelaide is his mammy. That's 100% his mammy, but she's a tethered. But now he's tethered and his sister is tethered. So it's like, what to do? So at the end of the movie, you're thinking, well, damn, who was the bad guy? Off rip, I think Adelaide. But that's just my opinion. That's just my perspective. Some people still feel like Red is the bad guy because she didn't have to do all that. You know, but to me, Adelaide didn't have to do all that by switching their fucking lifestyles. So she never did that. Red A would have never did what the fuck she had to do. The middle class only fights when they are forced to. And that was Adelaide's family. The lower class, they fight because they have to. And that's Red A. They had to fight because they didn't have a quality life. They didn't have anything. They didn't have nothing else to lose. So why not fight? Adelaide did all that to rise up in the social ladder and did nothing for those people that she left behind, which happens every day in America, every day. That's why I hate the whole, uh, oh yeah, I can't wait to make it out of the hood. And for me, I shouldn't have to leave my fucking home in order to thrive and flourish. That's what I think about. I kind of already answered it previously, but did Jason get switched to me? No. And then there's some people who are like, what well, Red A could have taught him English. Red A had five-year-old vocab. How the fuck would she know to say anus? One. Two, why wouldn't Red A teach Abraham or Ombre the same thing? Why, why wouldn't she teach them English? They're her family, too. And if I'm wrong, if y'all feel like, you know what I'm saying, y'all still stand for it, that's cool. Drop it in the comments and help me. Help me out. So who are the tethered? They had like a science lab vibe, government experiment type of shit. They wanted the clones to control those up above the ground but it obviously was flawed and ain't worked like that so that's why i'm assuming that the what jason did with pluto they really wanted pluto to do to jason basically control it's like they were able to duplicate the bodies but they couldn't duplicate the souls and no right to still be overlooked because they were still humans they still had the body just like homeless people overlooked just like bitch name all the fucking minorities Okay, don't deserve to get looked over because we are still human. Some people asked if they were in the same universe. And honestly, I can see it go both ways. It's like, because with this universe, they're trying to figure out how to duplicate souls. And in the other universe, they were like, fuck all that duplicate. Let me just take my soul out and place it in this motherfucker. So just based off of that, I can see it going either way. 
one way that they learn from Get Out, the other way they never learn, and this is a completely different universe, and they're trying something different. So I don't know. Also, you know, they both have a crazy psychological feel or thriller about them, you know, so who the fuck knows? This movie just goes to show that our environment and privilege shape us all. Red A and A were both born the same, but one to be perceived as normal and the other one is creepy. Even Red is an example of what happens when your resources are depleted. She went from this little girl who lived a good life, was happy, involved, had a good family, and then she kind of turned batshit crazy. You know? So we can assume that Red succeeds with her movement even though she dies because with the last shot, you see all of the tethers holding hands across plains and mountains and shit like that. Now, the reason why I'm assuming that her movement succeeded is because Hands Across America, back in the day, they failed because they had gaps in different areas. So basically they did all this work for nothing. But I assume that she succeeded because they were holding hands across mountains and you saw the helicopter shot. So y'all, I really, like I said, I enjoyed the fuck out of this movie. I wanna watch it again. Uh, most likely I am gonna watch it again. I don't know if I wanna spend $11 to fucking watch that bitch. I might wait until it goes into the dollar theaters because, uh, okay. Now, unless somebody wanna pay for me, that's fine, but you know. So y'all, that's all I have. If there's anything that I miss, any theories, I'm sure I've missed something. Go ahead and drop it below in the comments. Um, but you can definitely, in the meantime, between time, go ahead and check out the links below to catch up on my other videos and rate and subscribe. And I shall fuck with y'all in the next video. Bye. Yeah.